Hi guys, today I'll be doing a review on the Kagero Dragonic Overlord DN deck. This deck is one of the top tier decks right now in Vanguard Zero with the release of Awakening of Twin Blades. So what are the strengths of Dragonic Overlord DN? Similar to the Big Tree, this card has its very own feature, which is the ability to restand as a Vanguard. So when your attack hits, you'll discard a copy of itself, an extra copy in your hand, and you'll be able to draw two cards and restand this card. So it's really powerful because first of all, you're getting an extra attack. Secondly, you're gaining extra two more drive checks, which potentially give you more heal and more draws. You also don't lose your twin drive when you resend, so that's really, really powerful. And also, it features the cross right similar to Phantom Blaster Overlord, where if you have a specific card in the soul, Dragonic Overlord, it will become a 13k because it gains 2k extra attack power. So 13k Vanguard is really powerful right now because it escapes a lot of magic numbers. So without further ado, let's jump into the deck. First of all, we play 4 copies of Gojo. Personally, this is just a personal preference because you'll be able to rest him and you get to ditch one card and draw a card. Very important because you really, really want to have your extra Persona Blast in your hand, extra copies of Dragonic Overlord the end in your hand so that you'll be able to do your Personal Blast. So with Gojo, I'll be able to discard these extra cards that I have in my hand, usually triggers, and try to draw into Dragonic Overlord the ends or extra perfect cards. So that's a bit of consistency and also he's a 7k to boot. So it's really, really nice because 7k uh, behind a Burning Horn will help you hit 19k, which is still magic number. The magic number in this season is probably uh, 18k. We do play 4 copies of Vanilla in this deck because they are very important. Behind 10k units such as Strikens or any of your Great Trees, you will be able to hit magic numbers against the Cross Rides. And finally, 1 copy of Tech in uh, Ermo, the Promise Ammo. If you're boosting an Overlord, it could be the end or the base form. He gains plus extra 4k by soul blasting one. Um, this card is really good, especially when you pull off Persona Blast and your opponent actually checks a trigger because it will auto trigger its ability and it, it will become the 10k booster to hit the next magic number, which is very important. And also, because we play the starter con row, we will be able to search any uh, great ones we need. So, usually, depending on the matchup, I will choose what I want to add. Usually, against Shadows, I'll add the perfect guard because they have damn charging lands early game. And the another reason why Kagero is actually one of the best. Uh, cons most consistent uh, top tier decks is because it's one of those kinds like Spike Brothers being able to search out their perfect guard as long as they have one counter blast so that's really good alright that aside let's go on to Great 2's uh, for the Great 2's it's more about the early game prep I call this the early game prep lineup basically uh, it is very common to see 4 copies of Bellicosity and 4 copies of Striken because of the meta right now especially with MLB being one of the craziest decks right now it's very important to have this lineup um, usually, it's, for me, it's the Strikon or the Tejas is the best to ride. Okay, let's take a look at Tejas. Tejas is uh, not unnerfed in this version. Uh, until the nerf comes, we will be playing 3-4 to four most uh, in most decks. So this card can attack a unit in the back row opposite of it. So if you ride this guy as a Vanguard and your opponent has the Winger Brave at the back, you can attack the Winger Brave and snipe it off. Uh, very important because Winger Brave is the only unit that gives uh, MLB their chance to go into their search out their great tree. So you don't don't have if they don't draw their great trees in the early game, they will usually be stuck in the great two, and this gives you one whole turn of advantage. So Tejas is really commonly seen in the meta right now. So do take note. Um, you could play four if you want to, and um, cut off one more Burning Horn for it. I do play. I do feel that Burning Horn is slightly better against the Mirror Match or PBO because of the cross rights. Alright, next we play 4 copies of Bellicosity. Bellicosity is very important because um, you do use a lot of Calm Blast in this deck and you definitely want to have your Calm Blast open for uh, your Persona Blast. So, yeah, I think one uh, 4 copies is kind of a must right now. Um, if you don't have 4, it's okay, but you try to play as much as possible. Uh, next is Strikon, a very interesting unit. The reason why Strikon is used in this deck is because Strikon has the ability to gain one extra crit when ridden into Great Tree. So one main reason this card is used is because of this ability, Restrain. This unit cannot attack when as a Vanguard. So during Great 2, you're not attacking at all. You may ask how, why would you want that? Well, first of all, in this meta where Counter Blast is so important in the early games for decks like MLB, Emergency Lot Blaster, denying your opponents with Counter Blast is actually very good. And don't forget that you'll make it up for it for your next turn, right? Because you gain one extra crit. And this is actually really powerful, especially if you go into the end. If you do not do the cross right, it's fine because when you write Overlord the end and you do have the Persona Blast, you'll be ha your the crit will maintain for the entire turn and there are games that will be able to end the opponent off in one single shot just because you have the extra crit and you'll be resending with the personal blast. Yeah, if they don't have PGs for that, they are actually very screwed. So it's really, really powerful. Now we play two copies of Burning Horn Dragon. It's just there to run over um, huge cross right decks like MLB or 
the PBO, the big tree basically. You can cut this down to two, two or one if you want to, depending on matchup. Right now I see a lot of MLB, so I play more Tages. If you want to play more Burning Horn, it's fine as well. But in zero, it just isn't really as important as in the main game. So for the great trees, we play four copies of Dragonic Overlord. It's basically the base form for your cross, right? He also has a very powerful ability to counter blast tree to um, retire your entire opponent's front row. Next, we have the cross right Dragonic Overlord DN. It's Persona Blast, Counter Blast 2 and discard a copy of itself and you'll be able to resend this Vanguard and draw 2 cards. This is why the Kagero deck plays a lot of draws in them because you want to draw into your Persona Blast pieces so that you can pull off your Persona Blast. Uh, one, they have a couple ways to use this ability. One of them is to attack your Rearguard and resend and consider that a Counter Blast 2 to retire one of your opponent's Rearguard and draw 2 cards. So that's a pretty huge move as well. If you know, if your opponent is at 5 damage already, you usually use the end to attack the Rearguard so that your, your rearguards can attack your opponent's vanguards. Mm, yeah, you will see how it works later on, alright? So yeah, Personal Blast, very really good. Cross right 13k, very nice. Blockade is still a very good card, especially if you run out of Counter Blast and it's late game, opponent at 5, your opponent has a lot of intercepts. Your best option is actually to go into Blockade because you nullify all the intercept abilities and you just swing for face. It's a high chance of winning if you write Blockade in the late game. Play 4 Blockades if you can because it's truly a good finisher. So let's try out this deck in ranked. Actually, this is a pretty good hand. Maybe the PG I will send back because it's not really good against OTT. So, yep. I kept back my PGs, unfortunately. But let, let's try to draw into our Dragonic Overlord at the end. So, if you're going first, usually what I'll do is I'll use Gojo. And use since you won't be able to attack anyway, use Gojo's ability to tap. Ditch some uh, useless cards. Not so useless, but not so useful cards. And try to draw into your Dragonic Overlord at the end. I draw into this guy, which is pretty good because in the late game, he does help me hit magic nip numbers. Yeah, it's a basically a, a booster for the overlords. So it's a boon deck. He passes the first chain, right? Very nice. Gets a heal trigger. Not a good timing though because he did still charge one more heal. Um, the key deck, the key strategy of OTT is actually to utilize heal. So, uh, unfortunately, speaking of devil, we got our very own heal coming out. So right now, kind of wow, this is a pretty good hand. Uh, kind of, I kind of wish that we draw striker so that I can show you its power, but it's okay. We're gonna ride into this guy. Or oh, even Bilocosity would be good because we'll be able to counter charge. We could use Conroe's ability to search up for, perhaps for a booster so that we can utilize the Soul Charge, um, the Counter Blast, in case I check a heal. So, I already have my uh, Vanguard, main Vanguard booster already, so let's go. Main Vanguard booster. Just gonna throw it onto the bot and just proceed to attack. We're gonna give it too much damage. Just, just as I thought, a heal trigger. You want to utilize like, uh, make sure to not waste your huge triggers. Like if I didn't use the Count Blast, it's kind of a waste I feel. Head now is uh, absolutely beautiful. This is the Great 2 chain. Hmm, Alright, yes, it's, it's 10. That's good. Puts a PG in. He just play Dark Cat, that's a very interesting tech choice. It could be an Imperial Dotto deck as well, so you never know. Oh wow, two pieces of the Persona Blast, very nice. Well, if it's the Imperial Dotto deck, then I will have to change my strategy. Like, perhaps I'll keep this and 40 back, because I will need to hit 21k with my Cross Right. It's not hard, because um, Cross Right is already 13k by itself. So any 8k booster will help get the job done. So we're gonna ride into the Dragonic Overlord. Perhaps I will use this ability. Discard the Waterfall. The Dragonic Overlord, okay. So it's pretty much the same result. I'll keep this because I, just in case it is in, indeed an Imperial Daughter deck. Mm, 
The Arbor PG is not good. If you keep tracks of that, uh, you'll know that I do not have a lot of PGs left in my deck. When he writes his CEO Amaterasu, a good alternate right. And also Amaterasu's uh, 14k base is uh, very... It's quite painful against the Dragonic of Lord in the end. Since 14k can easily uh, beat through cross rights. And any bo and uh, some decent boosters will make it uh, magic number... Next magic number against cross rights as well. Like if you have Weather Girl milk behind, you'll be a cross right killer. Very interesting. That's how it works uh, back then in the original games. Use the Psychic Bird or Luck Bird to draw. Interesting. Just kill off the Overlord. Very interesting. Now, honestly, I would think that he would go for more damage, but he didn't. Because once he pushed me to 4, I might be in danger. Or rather five, I we I get insta killed by uh, Tom. So right now we're gonna go into our cross right. So let's go Dragonic Overlord D N. Call down the bar. Call down the Tages. Might probably only be able to do one point of damage to him, but I think it's fine. So we're gonna attack um, using Dragonic Overlord D N unboosted, attacking the side here. We're going to overlock the end, attacks the side. Draw trigger, nice. If you draw another the end, that will be bonkers. Mm, we could actually just power to the mega. It's pity you didn't draw that. So personal blast in action. Let's go. Oh wow, okay. I see how... I see you. I see you, dude. So, again. Swing solo. Doesn't check a trigger, but it's okay. Let's do it again. Person double Persona Blast in a single turn. Hype. So you can see, um, the amount of cards I'm drawing with this is quite a lot. Since we we also doing drive checks, so finally let's give it a big bang. Hopefully, you can check a huge trigger though. Okay. So a really nice hand size. I am also ready to f end the game if I have extra con blast. Because Bellicosity would, if I were to draw an extra DN, I could use Bellicosity and counter charge, and actually um, do another personal blast. So some pretty cool. But I need to take uh, take note because Bellicosity have to hit the Vanguard. Uses the Moon skill, replenishing his hand. I feel like perhaps maybe I should have pushed. Um, this go Gojo up to the front. I expect get myself to get some triggers though. And also he's he's apparently ready to end the game. If he checks a trigger, I might actually lose from the Tom. So let's see how it goes. He checks a trigger. Perhaps because he manipulated the stack properly. A critical trigger. Um, I don't think that's good though. I got really lucky there because uh, the crit I will not die. So finally, it's time for Block it to shine. I'll right block it since he does have intercept. Oh wow, Block it is such an awesome animation. Wait, I want. I might want to counter charge. You know? Even if he does need to have uh, two PGs to survive. That though. 
If you check a trigger, I'm dead though. Oh wow, okay. Calling on you triggers. You triggered, nice. It does have a PG. Mm, okay. It's alright. So yeah, um, I could potentially finish it off, but the problem is he did check one uh, damage trigger. So if you just have another Tom, I might be uh, actually dead, so... Right seal on my Karasu. Very interesting. I'll probably have to hit, hit the magic numbers. Oh, to maybe to check for that critical trigger. He plays to the bottom of the deck. So, it's definitely not a trigger. Maybe a crit trigger. Oh yes, it's not a crit trigger. Lucky me. Call Dragon O Blood. Might as well just clear the rear guts and gain the extra 5k power. He gives up, well, yeah, I think he doesn't have any huge trigger left. So as you guys can see, the Dragonic Overlord, the end deck, is really aggressive. Um, I'm glad I am able to pull up a double Persona Blast, perhaps one of my most epic uh, Persona Blasts in history. I'm glad I recorded it. And also, you kind of see that um, Dragonic Overlord seems to be the new OTD with all those hand size and retiring power which makes this deck really strong. I actually had a lot of fun using this deck. And also, I'm glad that I'm able to show off uh, Blockade's potential. Its ability to prevent intercept is so good, especially if you have run out of Counter Blast. Uh, just like I could have won the game, but he did check the extra draw trigger, so uh, props to that. But at least we kind of showed the strength of Blockade in the deck. So once again, I hope you guys enjoy my deck profile on the Dragonic Overlord DN deck. Uh, there'll be more deck profiles coming up soon. I think next one will be um, Scarlet Witch Coco for you, so if you guys are wondering. So yeah, once again, thank you guys for watching. Peace out.